Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us as we honor the legacy of our beloved late UC Davis Chancellor, Larry Vanderhoff. Chancellor Vanderhoff's leadership and mentorship in food science and agricultural research has made a lasting impact in Taiwan and far beyond. You'll hear more about that today. We're also gathered today to celebrate you. Your support of the UC Davis Taiwan campaign has helped advance our mission to make the world a better place. We're grateful to have such a dedicated group of supporters in Taiwan. In fact, many of you have established your own endowment funds. With your gifts, our students, researchers, and faculty have been able to delve deeper and make new discoveries. You've helped accelerate innovation in climate, health, technology, the arts, and so much more. Now I'd like to take a moment to thank our UC Davis Taiwan Alumni Chapter for leading the way in alumni engagement. I'd also like to thank the Taiwan Fundraising Committee. Both groups have helped Aggies stay connected with the heart of UC Davis. Lastly, I'm honored to recognize Chancellor Vanderhoff's wife, Rosalie, who is here with us today. Rosalie accompanied the Chancellor on many of his journeys to Taiwan, and she will always be a part of the UC Davis family on both continents. I'd also like to share some exciting news. We're well on our way to vaccinating our campus community against COVID-19. More than 14,000 frontline personnel and other hospital staff have been vaccinated. Just last month, the Davis campus opened a COVID-19 vaccine clinic where eligible employees and students can receive the vaccine. Our students, who you've supported, have remained remarkably resilient as they've coped with the challenges of remote learning. I'm optimistic about the future and looking forward to a safer, healthier year. If all goes as planned, we will return to in-person instruction in the fall. Until then, we're happy to meet virtually. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Sean Keister, Vice Chancellor of Development and Alumni Relations and President of the UC Davis Foundation. Sean leads our major fundraising campaign, which we launched publicly last October, called Expect Greater from UC Davis for the World. It's the most comprehensive campaign in UC Davis history, with a goal to raise $2 billion to strengthen the university and improve the world. Please join me in welcoming Vice Chancellor Keister. Thank you so much, Chancellor May. I am thrilled to be here to celebrate our most devoted UC Davis advocates. You've helped us achieve great heights in research, innovation, and student education. As Chancellor May mentioned, we publicly launched our $2 billion fundraising campaign, Expect Greater from UC Davis for the World, this past October to address today's most urgent challenges. You may remember watching the Virtual Innovation Spectacular online. While we are well underway to reaching our goal, it would not have been possible without your support. The UC Davis Taiwan campaign has been a significant contributor to helping us already be at the $1.2 billion mark of our $2 billion goal. That is incredible. Our Taiwan alumni, parents, and friends have donated over $1.5 million in recent years, making many new programs possible at UC Davis. Now, I would like to give a very special thanks to our leadership donors. Sandy Yen donated $500,000 to establish the Yen Shuang Fellows Program, which supports Taiwanese graduate students. Liao Hui Tong at Air Physics Company Limited gave $300,000 to support the Yang Chiuk Chemistry Lab. Yudi Wong and Douglas Cheong gave $110,000 to establish the Full Speed Ahead Scholarship Endowment for undergraduate students and $100,000 to support the Larry Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Endowment. Another anonymous donor also contributed $100,000 to the Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Endowment. Nyung Yo Seed Company donated $100,000 to the Kent Bradford Endowed Chair for Seed Science. Young San Lan gave $100,000 to the Larry Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Endowment. And last but not least, the Taiwan Ministry of Education made the Larry Vanderhoff Memorial Lectures possible. Your gifts have raised the profile of UC Davis and allow Larry Vanderhoff's legacy to live on. We look forward to sharing a tribute video of Chancellor Vanderhoff's lifetime work in Taiwan later in this event. We also give our sincere thanks to all of our donors who have given to this important campaign.
Thank you again for your generosity. While all of your gifts have made an enormous difference at our university, I wanted to briefly highlight the impact of two gifts in particular. Sandy Yen's $500,000 gift has already funded 24 Yen Shuang Fellows from Taiwan for their graduate studies at, here at UC Davis. These graduate fellows will in turn bring research and innovation back to Taiwan. Yudi Wang and Ch Doug Chiang's Full Speed Ahead Scholarship Endowment has so far supported four young undergraduate scholars. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Leo Fu Tong, Vice President of Academia Sinica. He has served as chair of our fundraising committee of this UC Davis Taiwan campaign. He has successfully led the Taiwan Fundraising Committee, which is the first of its kind among international alumni groups and is now a model for other countries. Please join me in welcoming Professor Leo Fu Tong. Thank you, Vice Chancellor Keister, and thank you to the fellow alumni, parents, and friends who have contributed to the UC Davis Taiwan campaign. It brings me great joy to welcome everyone today to recognize our collective achievement in raising over $1.5 million. It has been an honor to lead the UC Davis Taiwan Fundraising Committee. I cherish a proud history of cooperation between UC Davis and Taiwanese universities and research institutes, namely Academia Sinica, National Zhongxin University, and National Taiwan University for their generous collaborations. The inspiration for this campaign was the trailblazing work of Chancellor Vanderhoff. I have such fond memories of Chancellor Vanderhoff as I'm sure many of you do. He was a dedicated and inspiring educator who cared deeply about the international research and education. Belief in the transforming power of transnational exchange in academia and the person who loved the people of Taiwan. Together with the Taiwan Ministry of Education, who is supporting the Larry Vanderhoff Memorial Lecture Series, your generous contributions to our campaign will create a rich and a stimulating academic entrepreneurial ecosystem in Taiwan for scholars. This attracts graduates to return to Taiwan after studying abroad to be leaders and innovators in their fields. Today, we have raised $500,000 to the endowed Larry Benderhoff Cooperative Research Fund. As an endowed fund, Yong Jiu Jijing, it continues the work of Chancellor Benderhoff by funding a research exchange program for faculty and the graduate students between UC Davis and Taiwan. Professor Gerbe Hock will share more about the impact of this fund when she speaks later. I would now like to recognize the efforts of dedicated individuals of UC Davis Taiwan Fundraising Committee. Vice President Yang Changxian of NCHU, who is our president of the UCD Taiwan Alumni Association. Professor Gong Jian, Distinguished Professor Emeritus at UC Davis School of Medicine. Alumna Dr. Andy O, oh, retired faculty member from NTU. Alumnus David Wu, manager of Sentosa Company. Katie Chan, who represents her parents, UD Wang and Douglas Chan of Tianxin Company, Taizong. Please join me in thanking the UC Davis Taiwan Fundraising Committee for their efforts. I'm now pleased to introduce VP Yang Changxian, who is president of the UC Davis Taiwan Alumni Association. Thank you. Thank you, VP Liu, and uh, thank everyone to join us today in Taiwan and virtually from California and around the globe. As president of UC Davis Taiwan Alumni Association, I am honored to see so many fellow alumni here at our lunchroom gathering in Taipei, and those join us virtually. It truly shows that you care deeply for the mission of our campaign. To boost the cooperation between UC Davis and Taiwan, and to strengthen the academic environment in Taiwan. 
through our contributions, we are giving back to our alma mater, UC Davis. Our gifts are benefiting Taiwanese students to study at UC Davis. Taiwan scholar and the student returning to Taiwan and uh, well now have a robust ecosystem to pursue their scholarly aspirations. In November 2019, we launched the Larry Vanderhoe Memorial Lecture Series, funded by Taiwan Ministry of Education and host at National Zhongxin University. In the spirit of Chancellor Vanderhoe, we brought together renowned UC Davis scholars to Taiwan to share their research and expertise with the Taiwanese academic community. I am so proud of our efforts in supporting this campaign. Our alumni network connects some 400 UC Davis alumni in Taiwan, creating a community for all who love and want to volunteer and give back to UC Davis. I say all because our network is not only for UC Davis alumni. In fact, we invite anyone who has a connection to UC Davis to join us. If you are UC Davis parents, researchers, postdoctor, or have any other connection with the university, we are happy to have you in our network too. Wherever you might be in the world, you can keep in touch with your Taiwan alumni network including the recent 24 Yan Chong Fellows made possible by Pilanzo Pister Sandy Yang. I personally welcome you all to our Taiwan Alumni Network today. We are honored to continue fostering strong academic and research cooperation between UC Davis and Taiwan that began during Chancellor Vanderhoe's tenure. He first brought our community together and gave our alumni network a strong foundation for our succeed. We are so proud of our alumni network achievement and the support we gave to this fundraising campaign. I am beyond impressed that Taiwan is the first country to hold an alumni lead fundraising campaign. Together, we have set an extraordinary example for other alumni network. Now, I would like to share the following Larry Vanderhoe's legacy video to give tribute to Chancellor Vanderhoe's significant contribution to Taiwan. Let's take a few minutes to pay tribute to the work of Chancellor Van der Hoek. Often, our greatest heroes are the listeners. UC Davis Chancellor Emeritus Larry Vanderhoff was one. His mantra was, listen, listen, listen. At UC Davis, he listened to a university ready for growth and led it to new heights as chancellor from 1994 to 2009. But he was listening across the world too, with a passion for international education and exchange, and its promise to build a more peaceful world. In Taiwan, Chancellor Vanderhoff listened to the needs of agricultural experts to improve methods for growing crops. Over 30 trips in three decades, Chancellor Vanderhoff combined his expertise in plant biology and his fondness for Taiwan to build on Taiwan's tradition of academic excellence. He established long-lasting, fond ties with colleagues, built a community of agricultural leaders, and ensured that Taiwan's plant scientists would continue to advance techniques to improve food production for its people. Today, we listen to Chancellor Vanderhoff's example and build upon his legacy 
Thanks to your generosity, we have listened to Chancellor Vanderhoff's wishes and will continue his work to build a lasting, peaceful, international world of bounty and of harmony. Thank you for joining Chancellor Vanderhoff as a hero, as a listener, and as a supporter of his legacy to improve agriculture in Taiwan. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning to honor Larry Vanderhoff's legacy and to celebrate the generosity and philanthropy. It is now time to transition to our open discussion, the live segment of this virtual event. Joining me will be Rosalie Vanderhoff, Professor Jackie Gervais Haig, alumni Andy O oh, and alumni Kirin Tsui, and including three donors who share why they gave and their philosophy in philanthropy. Rosalie, wife of the late Chancellor Emeritus Larry Vanderhoff, is active in supporting the university in many ways, including donating to the Larry Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Fund. Welcome, Rosalie. Thank you, Marina. It's so good to be here. And welcome to everybody who there in Taiwan and welcome to my home here in Davis, California. I am so grateful today that Chancellor May was a part of this event and carrying on with the relationship between UC Davis and Taiwan. The Chancellor is working very hard to make UC Davis grow and become greater with each passing day. And Lachelle, his wife, is right there beside him doing a beautiful job of promoting UC Davis. I'd like to take a little time right now to just say thank you to Professor Lu Fu Tong, Lu Fu Tong, because I met here with him on a, several occasions uh, as we were preparing for this event. I know that you have worked very hard and um, and have done a wonderful job in raising the money and making this this campaign such a great success. And I'd also like to take a moment to thank the leadership of the Taiwan Ministry of Education and National Chongqing University for the creation of the Larry Vanderhoof Memorial Lecture. I know that you've had two of those already. And thank you to every one of you who supported the UC Davis Taiwan campaign, created in memory of my late husband, Larry Vanderhoof. I am touched that so many of you would support this cause. Some of you who continued, who, who really knew Larry and knew him personally, and others of you may not have known him except for what you learned through this, through contributing to this, um, this campaign. Whether you knew him or you didn't know him, I know we have all benefited from the passion and the, uh, uh, and the academic diplomacy that he had in the relationship that was built between UC Davis and, and Taiwan for over 35 plus years. Throughout his life, he found there was a genuine strong desire for learning that was unique to Taiwan. This made it easy and enjoyable for him to share knowledge with the academics, the researchers and students of Taiwan. Larry would truly be very humbled by your contributions and keeping this relationship alive. And I do know that he today is here with us in spirit. So again, just thank you so much to each and every one of you. And I know Marina that you have some questions to ask of me to just let them know a little bit about our relationship with Taiwan. Yes. So Rosalie, here's my first, first question. When was the time frame of your visits to Taiwan with Larry? And were these short visits or staying through for longer periods? Well, we first came to Taiwan in 1984. So that is 35 plus years ago already. And uh, the last time that we visited there was in 2000, 20, 2011, I'm sorry. And um, little did we, think that that would be our last, our last time, but that, that was. And those visits lasted sometimes for a few days, but mostly for one, one week to perhaps up to a month. So we had a very enjoyable and many visits to Taiwan. 
my second question, on what occasions did you accompany Larry in Taiwan? Well, I can think of three that stood that stood out to me. The first one was in 1984, the first time we came, and uh, Larry did uh, a lecture lectured at um, National Taiwan University for for one week, and then we went further south into Taiwan and um, took a train, took one of the trains, and visited other institutions and research laboratories. Uh, and so, even on that very first visit, we got to meet. Um, many other many other people. And and another time, another time was in 1987, in which he became an Eisenhower Fellow, and at that time uh, we also brought our children uh, along. And uh, my daughter was just here this last weekend, and we actually brought out the album from that time and looked through it and remembered all the fine things that we did that time. There again, we traveled throughout all of Taiwan visited uh, many research universities there as well as research institutes. And again, continued to meet more and more people. And then the last time I remember was 2011 when we were there and got to see our very personal friends um, and had such enjoyable times with them. And at that point, Larry was already retired. So how did these cross-border relationships with Taiwan get started for Larry? Well, you know, that's very interesting, Marina. Um, it started when Larry was a graduate student at Purdue University um, in, in Indiana. And it happened to be that in that laboratory, uh, the major professor was Dr. Joe Key, that um, in that laboratory was Dr. Chu Young Lin. And, and Dr. Lin, I think at that time was a, po a postdoc. And we had very close relationships with everybody in the lab. Um, the lab got together a lot for so social occasions. And so I got to know Chu Young quite well and also his wife, Pinchin. And, uh, and that relationship kind of continued over the years, even after we left. And then when Larry became a professor at the University of Illinois, he had many Taiwanese students in his laboratory. And one of them, Dr. Chi Ying Wang, from, who later on became a part of National Taiwan University, um, studied on, under Larry and got his, got his PhD, went back to Taiwan, and then in 1984, invited Larry to come on over and do, those, do the lectures for that one week. Well, again, during that time, he meets, he meets other professors and so forth, and the relationships just just begin, just begin. And then he became the Eisenhower Fellow in 1987, met more and more people. And, um, and just as time passed, and he then became even chancellor at UC Davis, he was able to open many doors for faculty here. And, um, and, the, and the relationship from there just blossomed. Of course, he opened the doors for faculty, faculty came, they made the collaborations, and, and continued on. And so here we are today with all that has, that has happened. It's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Well, we got much to learn from Larry. It's really one <laughs> relationship at a time and then it goes a little bit faster when the group gets bigger. My next question, yes. how did these experiences add value to your own personal experiences? Well, you know, I love UC Davis, and so one of the one of the things that I really enjoyed at when we came when we went was to the alum actually the the receptions with the alumni, and uh, it was so much fun to um, to to connect with those peoples and to, and to remember for them to remember the things that they had done here at UC Davis you know, where they lived, uh, what was happening at UC Davis now, and some of their experiences. That sharing was very personal and, 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 and enjoyable. Um, and, and also wonderful to see what they had done with what they had learned at UC Davis and what they were now doing in Taiwan. So that, those, those were wonderful um, time, times together. Uh, and of course, we had the banquets and so forth as, as, uh, as usual, and, and that was great. But you know, the thing that really stuck out to me were the times we got into the homes of, of people in Taiwan, and also some of these smaller dinners in which there would be six to eight people, 
and uh, spouses were there and we would just gather together um, and enjoy each other's company. It almost the same as if I was here in, in the United States gathering with people here, my friends at UC Davis. But, but there, it, it, it really dawned on me on how much we are all the same. Um, and the, even when we could talk about our differences, we respected them. And uh, that whole thing of knowing that the collaboration was more than just getting together because of the discipline, but, but getting together to know and understand each other better. That was what I enjoyed the most. Fantastic. And in fact, what you just said segues very nicely to my final question for you. How did Larry feel about the values of these visits and what was his personal belief about such exchanges between UC Davis and Taiwan? Well, I think he enjoyed some of the very same things that I, that, that I enjoyed, but of course he was very interested in the collaboration between um, students and faculty that, that occurred and that we would again be learning, learning from each other. But I think as he became chancellor and time went on, just as important to him was uh, the, um, the meeting together of, pe of peoples from different countries and, um, and learning, learning from each other. I think um, he felt that as educators, we could so much more talk with each other, understand each other, collaborate with each other, work with each other. By doing all of those things together, we became uh, just just individuals in this in this whole world, and for him, he thought that this could really bring peace to the world. Maybe in a way that sometimes governments can't can't do. So he felt this is his little dent. This is the one thing that he could, as an educator and a chancellor of a university, help a little bit with world peace. And isn't it interesting that all we as individuals can do that? Look at how this all started between two people in a laboratory at Purdue University and look what came, came out of it. Thank you, Rosalie. And we really feel the presence of Larry here tonight with us from what you have just told us. Now well, we have, thank you. Now we have Professor Gervais Haig, who is a chemistry professor at UC Davis and has worked alongside Larry Vanderhoff for these exchanges between UC Davis and Taiwan. Today, she continues the work of Larry Vanderhoff. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Marina, how are you? Well, your first question, could you tell us how and why you were roped in by Larry for the cross-border work between Taiwan and UC Davis? And what was the program you both were building in those early years? Well, yes, absolutely. First, let me thank you, Marina, for inviting me to comment uh, this evening. It's really a great honor to join our friends in Taiwan for this wonderful celebration of the UC Davis-Taiwan partnership. Uh, this is a partnership that, as Rosalie just told us, goes back to the time, you know, it started when Larry was a graduate student. And I was fortunate enough early in my career here at, at UC Davis to be able to join uh, Larry, Chance, Chancellor Vanderhoff and his leadership team on a trip to Taiwan. Um, at that time, it was uh, several of his deans, uh, the late uh, Winston Coe, who is my dean, Dean Van Alphen, uh, Dean Burtis, and then uh, faculty members, Bill Lacey, who's, who was the chair of Plant Sciences, Bill Lucas uh, in charge of international programs, and Bob Kerr, who um, we all depended on greatly for to cement, um, our, to cement the interactions between everybody. And together we traveled to NCHU, to um, NTU, and to Academia Sinica. And as fate would have it, I had been invited by then president of Academia Sinica, Ong Chi Wei, to present a vision for a joint uh, program between Academia Sinica and the chemistry department at UC Davis, in particular to um, 
fortify the exchange of students in to study pharmaceutical sciences. They're very interested in building their research park at Academia Sinica at that time. And we thought this would be a wonderful opportunity for students to exchange and engage in research in pharmaceutical sciences. And it was so fortuitous that Chancellor Vanderhoff was there, met with um, the president, and on the spot, um, they made a decision that they were going to enable the leadership, both at Academia Seneca and at UC Davis, to implement this program. And because of their quick action, we were able to spring into action very rapidly. And that program began in 2008 and has continued to this day. Uh, the program actually involves undergraduate students. So we, we have undergraduate students going to Academia Seneca, faculty and graduate students. And we teach pharmaceutical sciences, both to the UC Davis students and Academia Seneca students. And the exchange of faculty and graduate students and students has enriched the research enterprise. And so now today we have many uh, collaborative efforts between faculty at UC Davis and at Academia Seneca, but the cement for those relationships is the students involved in the programs. Thank you. Um, what was it like working under Larry Vanderhoff and how difficult was it to continue his work after Larry's passing in 2015? Um, and today, what is the program like today? Well, I love, I love the, um, the legacy video tonight uh, that talked about Larry and his, his mantra of listen, listen, listen. I really did learn that from him. But he coupled listening with action and empowerment. And as I said, he empowered, empowered you know, leadership to uh, implement programs because he, he gave the resources to make it happen. Uh, so actually, it went together very quickly, as I noted. Uh, we, I think we were there in the fall, and by the next spring, the program had begun. And because of the deep rooted leadership we have between our two institutions, those programs have stayed in place. And so by 2015, the program had already been going on for seven years. More than 100 undergraduates and 15 graduate students and dozens of faculty members had already participated in the program. And it was already a fully sustainable program at that time. So it, of course, breaks our heart that we lost Larry at that time, but he still lives in that program. He still lives in us. And as Ro Rosalie said tonight, I certainly feel his spirit here tonight. Wow. Now, let's fast forward. With this new Larry Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Endowment in place, and thanks to the generosity of so many, and the Larry Vanderhoff Memorial Lectures too, thanks to the support of the Taiwan Ministry of Education, what are some future possibilities? And how do you see this program going deeper and further? Well, thank you, Marina, for that, for that question. I'm so grateful to the generous uh, contributors that have enabled this endowment. As Vice President Liu Futong mentioned, we are, have been working for the last two years on a joint graduate program now between UC Davis and Academia Sinica, wherein we would really like um, to have support for Taiwanese students to come to UC Davis where they can study here for the first two years of their graduate tenure doing research in research labs here at um, UC Davis, and then for their capstone, returning back to their institutions in Taiwan to finish their PhD st uh, studies. Um, so these, these uh, funds potentially, uh, the, the, the um, revenues from the endowment potentially could support such students so that they could come here and study for extended periods of time, like a two year time frame we think would be optimal. Uh, what would be really great about that as well is that it would even further cement the 
collaborative um, projects between the research groups here at UC Davis and at Academia Seneca because those students would have joint PIs, joint research directors that would be guiding their research. And so we think that that is a way to really build in sustainability into these important relationships that we've been building over the last several decades. And my final question, Jackie, would you like to share some of the outcomes and impact coming from these exchange efforts, both for Taiwan and for UC Davis? Thank you for that opportunity. Yes, I would. Um, you know, I was just, again, I was really struck by uh, what Rosalie said and how, you know, when Larry was a, gradu was a graduate student, you know, he began a relationship with Taiwan through a fellow student. And now through these programs um, that Larry initiated and nurtured and sustained, uh, we've had hundreds of students be able to have that same type of an initiation to what I believe will be a lifelong uh, relationship for them as well. Many of the graduates from this uh, program have gone on to the pharmaceutical industry here in the United States uh, they've also gone into the food industry um, and the ones that are in the pharmaceutical industry, actually several of them right now are working on treatments and cures uh, for COVID and, and looking to um, be ready for the next pandemic that might hit us. And there, <clears throat> one thing that invariably they all share with me is that the ability to go to Taiwan during their tenure here at UC Davis was a highlight for them. Uh, they fell in love with the country. They fell in love with the people. And the one thing that they all speak to is how much fun it was traveling around. Because when we go there, we travel all over the country also. And we usually travel in buses. And that means we're usually really enjoying karaoke. And so that's the one experience they can never forget is traveling in buses all over Taiwan, singing karaoke with their Taiwanese brothers. Wow, that sounds like the program is a lot of fun other than the academic part. Oh yeah. Thank you, Professor Gavay Haig. As I now turn to alumna Andy O, I want to bring attention to the alumni group gathered in the same room. They are getting ready for a luncheon at noon. It is most heartwarming to see so many of you in person gathering in Taiwan. Zhao An, Huan Ying, Huan Ying, you Now back to Andy O. Now Andy is seated uh, quite at the front. She's at the right corner um, of, of the screen, at the lower right corner. So Andy, um, yeah. my first question to you, when and why did you come study at UC Davis? And for what degrees? Oh, okay, we got a mic. Here. Turn on the mic. Floor to seventy six is for my my master, and nineteen eighty to eighty three is for my PhD. The reason why I choose UC Davis. Just because the Department of Food Science, I think is the best one to learn the food science. Thank you. Wow, that's nice to hear that. Now, how did UC Davis education and degrees make a difference for you after you returned to Taiwan? Well, UC Davis, after back home, I have all my confidence doing things. I have learned the way to teach, the way to do the research work and to be a useful person to help whatever, whoever needs help, to do my best to serve my country, my schools, my students, plus to be able to solve all problems I'm faced. I'm very grateful to be a student of UC Davis and always to be proud of being an alumnus of UCD. 
And where did you work, Andy, including what contributions you made to your local community when you returned? Well, I, I have worked as an so, associate, associate professor and a full professor in the Department of Food Science in NCHU for 21 years. Then went to Central Taiwan University and uh, Hong Kong University for another five and 1.5 years before fully retired for teaching child. Overall, I gained 70 more research projects from departments of education, agriculture, and science, and uh, food company as well. Under my guidance, there were nine PhD, 60 master, and 15 BS students. They are all either serving for government, university, and the industry, or establish their own business. Besides working as a professor in universities, I wish I with other T persons established an association of T uh, Taiwan T ATT in 2003. And I was the president of the first and the second term of ATT. In addition, started from year 2000, we also built up a relationship between Taiwan and mainland China in tea research field to have the tea industry symposium across both sides. Every two years hosted by ATT and the China Tea Science Society in terms. Wow, wonderful. My final question uh, is on the Larry Vanderhoff. How do you personally find the value of Larry Vanderhoff's work, mentorship, teaching, collaborative research for Taiwan? Maybe share with us some special occasions that you remember of Larry's special touch. Well, I first time met Chancellor Vanderhoff is in 1989. As a Housing Well Foundation fellow, he with his family was invited to come to come to Taiwan to visit for sightseeing and the both uh, um, interview, something like that. Then when I was the president of UCD Alumni Association Taiwan chapter, I have chance to host chancellors Holler and the Wendhoff which they were visiting Taiwan. What I know, Chancellor Wendhoff had a PhD student, Dr. Lin, teaching in NTU. A professor invited a major professor to come to Taiwan for a short visit or course. It's a very common thing to do. Therefore, whenever Chancellor Wendhoff had a chance to come to Taiwan, like in 1994, 2003, 2009, 2011, etc., we all have a wonderful welcome party for his gathering with all alumni. Each gathering time, Chancellor Wendhoff all brought some new things about UCD, just as like uh, to have a new front door in South David, I spent many hectares on UCD campus and the new buildings as well. Chancellor Wendhoff is a second to Chancellor Morak in terms of service year. He has not only is being an outstanding scientist working on biology, but also like to tell those non-science people all about life, health, relation, language. Chancellor Wendhoff is a very nice person. 
very easy to approach. Each time when I went to abroad for conference, I used to go to his office just to say hi to him. He always gave me a welcome smile face, just like a, to meet a close friend, so warm and nice. In, night, in 2013, when I and Irene went to UC Davis to see Chancellor Wendhoff, although he was having trans treatment, but still invite us to have a lunch. With low and a little weak voice, he was still felt happy to see something. This is my last time to see him. At last, in 2011, Chancellor Wendhoff even retired but still was very happy to be invited to come to Taiwan for a three-day courses, both at Taipei and Taizong each week. It took his effort to go to places for high burial. I'm so much grateful to Chancellor Wendhoff for his enthusiasm and kindness to Taiwan. The picture of both us sitting, chatting, and laughing on the backyard of Taizong Library just before a dinner with Taizong alumni is in my mind forever. Too much I wish to say, but upon the time limit, I have to stop here. I believe that all alumni in Taiwan will remember our, our best chancellor forever. He is Chancellor Wendoff. He is a model for us to follow up and to be a useful person in our life. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. That is really, truly touching. Well, thank you, Rosalie. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Andy, for all these lovely memories and warm conversations. Following, we shall hear from three donors as they share why they gave to the UCD Davis Taiwan campaign and how they think about philanthropy. First, let's hear from Sandy Yen, who served as Board of Trustees for the UC Foundation Board for three years from 2014 to 2017. It is my pleasure to be able to join you today in this virtual get together. I'm so happy to hear that some of the Yan Zhuang fellows are also with us. I'm glad that my gift plays a part in giving the students from Taiwan to US to study. Personally, my giving philosophy is that when we eat the fruit, we show bow to the root. In Taiwanese word, jia gui ji bai qiu tao. When my husband Yong Chai came to the U.S. many years ago, he got a full scholarship without any requirement for return. We really felt the generosity of this great American tradition. So we choose to play a part in making a difference in the lives of the young people who follow our footsteps coming from Taiwan into the U.S. for the first time to find their path and destiny. I have support 24 Yan Zhuang fellows today and hope this opportunity will help young Taiwanese students to reach their potential, taking them where they wanted to be. Thank you. Next. We hear from former parent and donor Yudi Wang. She also speaks on behalf of her husband, Douglas Chiang, and their company, Full Speed Ahead. Hello, UC Davis Chancellor, faculty and students. I am Yudi. I'm representing FSA and my husband, Douglas. We are here today to celebrate a transition 
from ending to beginning, from the familiar to the unknown, and from one challenge to another. We are grateful to be part of UC Davis as a donor. As former UC Davis parents, we have witnessed and experienced the Davis lifestyle from my son. The academic quality, discipline, and nurturing care of UC Davis education are a complete system for students. Based on this, we would love to see other young students to experience the same quality of education. This is why we established the Full Speed Ahead Scholarship. Couple years ago, we had a chance to join in and support the Larry Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Fund, as it has Taiwan UC Davis Student Exchange. That bridges two cultures. It also contributes to a strong scholarly research environment in Taiwan. In Larry Vanderhoff's vision and belief, with academic exchanges, we would have a more peaceful world. This is what we follow and do for our future generation. Like our brand name, FSA, we always do our best to live, and we do things full speed ahead. We wish the members of the UC Davis community all the best. And finally, we hear from David Wu, who is speaking on behalf of his father, donor Wu Zhaoxiong. It is our pleasure to be able to join you today in this virtual get-together. It gives us much pride to know that by giving to the Larry Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Fund, we have made a difference to develop the ecosystem of scholarly research and innovation in Taiwan. We hope that such a strong foundation and ecosystem in Taiwan helps bring home our Taiwanese researchers and scholars who seek conducive and thriving surroundings to reach their scholarly and research potential. We want them to compete and excel to reach where they want to be in their careers and aspirations. When we have these innovations at hand locally here in Taiwan, it would definitely help businesses like ours to lead in the forefront in the products that we manufacture in Taiwan and sell to the world. Joining with other donors in this campaign, we send our warmest best wishes to other alumni and parents in Taiwan to join in with your generosity. Thank you. It is truly heartwarming to hear from our donors sharing their meaningful and thoughtful expressions on philanthropy. At this juncture, we acknowledge Mr. T.K. Chiang, our alumnus and current board of trustee of the UC Foundation, who is attending virtually. Thank you, TK, for being with us. We also thank and acknowledge Deputy Director Liang Xuezheng of Taiwan Ministry of Education and alumni president Huan Zhongming of National Taiwan University. They are both with us at site in Taiwan, in Taipei, um, gathering with the alumni here at the Cosmos Hotel Live. Ah, there you go, yeah. Here's Deputy Liang and uh, President Kwan waving from their seats. Thank you, TK. Thank you, Dr. Liang. Thank you, President Kwan, for your precious time from your busy schedule to be with us. And now to our final closing speaker, Kirin Zui. Now he's right at the bottom right of the screen here. Ah, there he's waving his hands. Congratulations, Kirin. Today, as we gather here, we are so thrilled to celebrate your winning a $50,000 prize for your startup called Sophie's Bionutrients. We are all curious how you got started with Sophie's Bionutrients and how it became the growth stage winner of the 2021 UC Startup Innovation Challenge. What is the research and innovation that you wish to educate us on that your team is taking to the market, Kiran? Our company is based in Singapore, and uh, I first come, come uh, we're doing uh, sustainable uh, urban protein with uh, uh, microalgae. So I first came across um, plant-based food and fer fermentation food, fermented food is uh, at a conference in UC Davis back in 2017. Uh, it was a program by uh, UC Davis CIFAR program. That's how I came across the, the interest of the, uh, the future of food. 
So, and, and I entered a uh, University of California Re UC Regents uh, startup uh, pitch contest last uh, September uh, as um, UC Davis alumnus. And luckily uh, I won the first place uh, for $50,000. Uh, but without being a part of the UC Davis, uh, I don't think obviously we'll, I won't be able to have the opportunity to share uh, our vision for the world that what we're doing in uh, alternative protein space. Now, were there any lessons that you took from Larry Vanderhoff uh, when he traveled to Taiwan that impacted your innovative startup and the UC prize? Absolutely. Uh, I, I met uh, Chancellor Vanderhoff many years ago in Taiwan. I was very impressed by his effort in terms of cross-border promotion between uh, UC Davis and Taiwan academia uh, institutions. So, and, and I sort of served as a role model for me to be get more in, involved or engaged with, the, uh, with the UC Davis. Uh, and so that's how I really got started with, with, with my uh, career and in, inspiration. Thank you, Kirin. We wish you and Sophie's Bionutrients all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Now on your screen, you will see a link in yellow, uh, now also coming to you in the chat box. We encourage you to join others to say thank you and honor the memory of the late Larry Vanderhoff and to support his continuing work through the Larry Vanderhoff Collaborative Research Endowment. Should you have any questions on setting up a scholarship or other funds in your name, you may reach me at my email on this closing slide, also now coming to your chat box. And yes, we did record this event. We shall send you the link in about two weeks. This recorded event will be on YouTube to watch again or to pass it along to your friends and family to enjoy. Thank you everyone for being here with us at this donor appreciation and to honor such an outstanding leader, the late Chancellor Emeritus Larry Vanderhoff. Fei Tang Gan Xie and heartfelt thanks for your generosity and confidence in UC Davis. Your support and commitment makes a tremendous difference to our faculty, students, and programs. As we've signed off now, um, we wish our alumni at Cosmos Hotel in Taipei a wonderful alumni gathering and luncheon. I think I can smell the food from here. <laughs> good night if you're in California or US, and good afternoon to you if you are logging in from a location in Taiwan.